Okay, we'll start with this. Steffi Bull, trainer extraordinaire to former WBC super featherweight champion Terry Harpier. Terry, who's going to be moving up to lightweight, he posted this via his Twitter account with a caption that reads, March 12th, 2022, who's next? Hashtag Belter. And in the images featured below, you'll see Heather Hardy, you'll see Melissa St. Ville, you'll see Eva Brutnitska, you'll see Miriam Gutierrez. Out of the four opponents featured here, the one with the most name value, the most recognizable face, would have to be the face of Heather Hardy, though I question whether or not Heather will take the fight, because Heather, she don't fight on the cheap, and she's coming off of two back-to-back losses. I wonder what kind of figure gets in the ring with Terry. What kind of money is Heather Hardy looking for, because I I vaguely recall Heather telling me right here on the channel that she was offered such a fight for something like $25,000. She didn't like the money. She didn't take the fight. Uh, she had to change her heart because she's coming off of two back-to-back losses. It's a legitimate question. What kind of figure is it going to take to get Heather Hardy in the ring with Terry Harper? What kind of money? Alongside Heather Hardy, you'll see Melissa St. Ville, the very vivacious Melissa St. Ville. Melissa St. Ville, who's coming off of three back-to-back consecutive victories after having lost in Belgium to Delphine Pursun in 2019. Melissa's fought three times since then, and she's won all three of those fights. A victory over none other than Canadian his own Jessica Kamara, a victory that is aging nicely. Much like Melissa St. Bill. Melissa fought Diana Santana in 2019, Jessica Kamara in 2020, and more recently, last year, she fought Olivia Garula. That was Melissa's only fight last year. Better still, Melissa is coming off of three back-to-back victories. Will Melissa beat the fighter that Terry Harpier debuts in the lightweight division against? She's a veteran of the sport, just like Heather Hardy, with the difference being she's coming off consecutive victories. Victories, whereas Heather, Heather might be a little bit more recognizable, but she's coming off of consecutive losses. Which one of those two girls is more likely to get the fight? Hello, Melissa and Heather. You'll see former WBO super featherweight champion Eva Brutnitska. Eva, who fought only once, just once last year, rebounded off the loss she suffered to Michaela Mayer in 2020 against Milena Koliva. She won that fight, but that was Eva's only fight all of 2021. She only fought once. Could Eva... Could Eva be who Terry ends up fighting in March? Next to Eva Brutnitska is Spain's own Miriam Gutierrez. Miriam, who's coming right off that loss to Amandia Serrano last month. Any one of these girls could end up getting a fight. Context is key here. Terry is on the rebound. She's coming off a violent knockout loss to Alicia Baumgartner. And because she's coming off a loss, these are all solid choices to rebound with. Because some of these fighters have some rebounding of their own they need to do. Steffi Bull posted this on Instagram. I'm curious to see who ends up getting this fight. Who do Terry and Steffi end up facing in March? Steffi, who posted this via his Instagram account with a caption that reads, you've got to hand it to Terry Harper. Even after coming off a loss, she said, I'm not fighting no lollipop lady. Her attitude is she don't need a pat on the back for beating up a journey woman. She wants a pat on the back for being in proper fights. That's what the fans deserve. Only people in boxing understand what fighters go through to make weight. Terry outgrown the super featherweight division a long time ago, but as champion, we kept on going. You're going to see a different fighter at lightweight. Thank you, Eddie Hearn, Matchroom, for the continued support. Hashtag Belter. Hashtag Let's go. Out of these four fighters, for my money, Melissa St. Ville would have to be the most interesting opponent choice because Melissa, like Heather Hardy, is a seasoned fighter, a seasoned veteran, but unlike Heather Hardy, Melissa's coming off of consecutive victories, whereas Heather's coming off of consecutive losses. I think that both fighters can make a fight out of it. Though I do think Melissa St. Ville would be the more interesting opponent choice. Heather's tough as nails and as experienced as they come, but Heather... It's a tough sequence of fights for her. A loss to Amanda Serrano, then another loss in a one-sided fight against Jessica Kamara. To move on from that to Terry Harper. Yeah, that's rough seas. I'm okay with Terry Harper fighting a fighter that's coming off a loss because Terry's coming off a loss. So it's fine by me. Whatever decision they make. Although in terms of interest, I'm more interested in Harper versus St. Ville, then Harper versus Hardy, then perhaps Harper versus Brutnitska. Brutnitska, Eva Brutnitska, who like Terry Harper is a former super featherweight champion that has since moved up in weight. I think the least interesting, albeit permissible choice out of these four fighters would have to be Miriam Gutierrez, who's coming off that one-sided beating late last year to Amandia Serrano. That's the fight I'm least interested in seeing, though ultimately I'm okay if the Harper people decide to fight Miriam because Miriam, like Terry, is coming off a loss.
Moss. So we'll see who Terry Hop ends up fighting in March. And if it just so happens to be one of these four fighters, I'm okay with it, regardless of which one. In other news, Roly Romero posted this to his Instagram account. It's a caption that reads, After three and a half months of my name being slandered with false accusations, having to miss out on opportunities, cheated out of my dream, and out of a massive amount of wealth, the investigation into the allegations made against me has been formally closed. Charges were not filed because the allegations could not be substantiated because, as I always stated, I'm innocent. I am now the symbol of freedom, purity, and love, oh. known as the boxer, formerly known as Roly. Now all you hating motherfuckers can suck my fat dick. Duh, duh, duh. And just like that, Roly Romero is back in the conversation, back in the running for a Javante Davis fight that I had no doubts would be rescheduled provided that Roly beats the case. Roly beats these allegations that were levied against him. Allegations oh. that could not be substantiated and as we all know, you're innocent until proven guilty. Thus, Roly wasn't able to be proven guilty. They couldn't fucking prove it. Roly Romero's legal woes have been resolved. There were many that jumped to conclusions and character assessments of Roly Romero as soon as those allegations were levied against him, as soon as that news broke. And I didn't rush to judgment, didn't rush to criticism, because I don't know all the details. I don't know all the particulars. For all I know, those girls are lying. For all I know, they're not lying. I ain't got all the facts, so I ain't gonna rush to judgment. On either side of it, the situation is now resolved, and Roly Romero is free to move forward with his boxing career. So they'll either reschedule the Javante Davis fight or have Roly Romero fight Isaac Cruz. That's how that breaks down. And I can say with some confidence that if the Javante Davis fight is rescheduled, in all likelihood, it will be billed as a pay-per-view because that's what they were planning on doing before. And it still isn't pay-per-view worthy. Javante Davis boxing Roly Romero is not a pay-per-view worthy matchup. It never was. You've heard Leonard Ellerby say things like it doesn't really matter who they stick Javante Davis in there with because he's the draw and he's gonna sell and that did not ring true in the case of the Isaac Cruz fight Isaac Cruz who was standing in for Roly Romero I don't want to overstate the relevance of a late replacement opponent given what Leonard Ellerby said if it doesn't matter who Javante Davis is fighting because he's the one everybody's paying to see I mean, nobody bought that thing in the hopes of seeing Isaac Cruz right right the draw is supposed to be Javante Davis not Roly Romero and not Isaac Cruz who was standing in for him the draw is supposed to be Javante well Javante didn't draw much. And Leonard Ellerby can't use a late replacement as an excuse because he said it doesn't matter who they stick him in there with. So what fucking difference does it make if it's Isaac or if it's Roly? All the same. It doesn't matter who they stick him in there with, according to you. Well, you know, Mike Kopinger's sources have been real quiet about this pay-per-view. That thing was weeks ago. He still hasn't released a preliminary set of numbers. Anything. A ballpark figure. And that says a lot without saying anything at all. I guess the question that I have on my mind in light of this recent news involving Roly Romero is... Now that he's free to have that fight, would a pay-per-view between him and Javante Davis do any better than this Isaac Cruz pay-per-view did? Does it being Roly make it any better? Does that make the fight more attractive? The fact that it's Davis versus Romero as opposed to Davis versus Cruz? Or is Romero just about as obscure as Isaac Cruz? Because I don't know very many people that are fans of Roly Romero. Hey, when they reschedule this thing, we'll find out. In heavyweight news, Philippe Pergovic on Ortiz turning down that IBF eliminator between them. He doesn't want the smoke! Smoke! Of smoke, course smoke. I know why. He don't want the smoke, man. There is no such official reason, so we all can figure out what is the reason. He didn't want the fight. It's IBF eliminator. It's a great chance for everyone. I don't understand. But it is what it is. He's 42 Saul instead of Ortiz. Does he want to fight a young, hungry animal like Philippe Pergovic? No. no. This could be his last fight. No. So I think he's looking for a cash-out fight. Oh. For us, it's frustrating because when someone after a fight says, you've got to come through me, and we've waited through a semi-final eliminator, it's a frustrating thing. We thought... He was going to take it. Obviously, we're disappointed. He claimed that he had an injured hand. It is what it is. We just gotta move on. Sutherland is dismayed by the number of fighters who will not even entertain a discussion about facing the 29-year-old Hergovic, who sports a professional record of 14 wins, no losses, no draws, with 12 knockouts. If you're in a top 10 of the division in the IBF, 
It doesn't show much confidence in your ability if you're turning down a fight without even negotiating, Sarlin said. Let's say we got with a young kid, Tony Yoka. If he turned down Philippe Pergovic without even negotiating, then what does that say about him as a fighter? Your confidence level. Philippe, I know Will, if I said to him, fight King Kong, not Luis Ortiz, the real King Kong, tomorrow, he'd do it. He'd jump on it because he has the mentality that he will fight anyone. And I couldn't have said it better myself. I really couldn't. He's right. Luis Ortiz turning down that fight the way that he did doesn't communicate confidence because even if you are injured... Not that I believe he is. I think it's all bullshit. But even if he really is injured, you work around the injury. You work around it because of what's on the other side of the fight. But that's what you do if you like your chances against Tergovic. If you don't like your chances against Tergovic... You shoot it down as soon as it's offered. The same way Luis Ortiz did. The same way that Joseph Parker did. They're both giving different reasons, the both of them. Luis Ortiz supposedly hurt his hand, though I don't know how much I believe that since there's been no medical report published specifying the nature of Luis Ortiz's injury. Joseph Parker, David Higgins, they said they didn't like the money. But if it was someone else, if it weren't Philippe Pergovic. If it was someone else, the money wouldn't be an issue. So the real issue at hand here is Hergovic. You don't like that money for Hergovic because you don't like the chances against Hergovic. And if you're claiming that Joseph Parker is such a big name, so much bigger than a Philippe Hergovic, that this money is insulting, I'll tell you what. Why don't you make Philippe an offer since you're such a big fucking name? You're too good for Hergovic. You're too good for that money. Mr. Big in the Britches, I'll tell you what. If you're too good for that money and you're so much of a bigger name than Philippe Hergovic, then why aren't you making him an offer? Because based on what's on the other side of this fight, a shot at the winner of Joshua versus Yusuk 2. Based on that, you should be trying to fight in this eliminator. That is if you like your chances, but you and I both know you don't like your chances against this guy. If it were Gerald Washington in an IBF final eliminator, do you think Luis Ortiz would have all of a sudden become injured? If it were Gerald Washington in an IBF final eliminator, do you think that David Higgins would be griping about the money? If Gerald Washington were the guy that they were being ordered to fight, do you think we'd be hearing any of this? No, we wouldn't. Now, the IBF has since offered this fight to Tony Yoka, the next man in the queue. And if I'm being honest, I don't expect Tony to take the IBF up on this offer because in all likelihood, Tony's looking to reschedule that fight with Martin Bacoli. Tony, unlike Joseph Parker, unlike Luis Ortiz, had a prior engagement that was postponed due to COVID protocols. I think they offered him to fight one or two days ago. And I think the IBF only gave Tony and his people about two or three days to come up with an answer. If they don't accept the offer, they're going to move on to the next man in the queue. Zile Zhang! China's own Zile Zhang, who started calling out Philippe Pergovic before this IBF stuff even started. Maybe he'll be the guy that Philippe ends up fighting in that eliminator, because all these other guys... They don't seem to want to. They all quite conveniently have other things they'd rather do. So maybe Zile Zhang will find the time that they did not. Finally, former WBA welterweight champion Queef Thurman says he wants a title shot in the summer of 2022. It's Yugos, Spence, or Crayford. I cannot stop other people from putting fights together, Thurman told Fight Hub TV. But if Thurman could have it Thurman's way, what it comes down to is getting back in the ring, putting on an exciting fight, showing people what it looks like to watch Keith Thurman in the ring after so many years to remind the people who Keith Thurman is and what I bring to the welterweight division. And then from there, it's Yugos, Spence, or Crayford. Whatever the politics, Thurman simply wants a title shot by the summer. I don't have a belt right now. I want a belt back, Thurman said. So all three of those guys are legitimate for a fight this up and coming summer. I'm fighting the first quarter of 2022. I can take a fight by July. Yeah, provided he doesn't get injured again. If this guy gets so much as a hangnail, he's going to sit out for the next two years. He sat out for roughly two years with a bad case of tennis elbow after the Danny Gershia fight. I have to base my assessment on Keith Thurman's own words. He's fighting in the first quarter of this year, and he looks to fight in the second quarter as well, for a title. In the second quarter of this year, Terrence Crawford will be available, but the winner of Ugas vs. Spence will not, because the winner of Ugas vs. Spence, regardless of who it is, a fight that's set to go down very soon, maybe two, three months, in April, that's when the fight is tabbed. 
to go down. The winner of that fight may have to face the winner of Butaev versus Stanionis. That's the winner of that fight. Whoever wins that fight is going to be in possession of the WBA title. And whoever's in possession of the WBA title will have the winner of Butaev versus Stanionis as a mandatory challenger. Stanionis has already stepped aside once. If he beats Butaev, will he step aside again? You know, he's not a PBC fighter. He's a pro bellum fighter. Some people still seem to think that... Should Errol Spence beat Ugas in that unification match, he will move to fight Terence Crawford. I've told you guys many times on the channel, I'm not holding my breath to see that fight. Tim Smith of the PBC, in so many words, he stated quite clearly the kind of money that Terence Crawford wants for that fight. He doesn't actually know what Terence wants for the fight because they haven't asked him. So many words he stated they haven't made Terence Crawford an offer, but better still, the kind of money he anticipates that Terence would want for that fight is more than they are willing to spend. In so many words, Tim Smith has found yet another reason to shoot that fight down. Yeah, he's been shooting that fight down since 2018. Proof's in the pudding and we brought a spoon. We've got the receipts. So what all of this essentially means is the winner of Spence versus Ugas may not be available to Keith Thurman because the winner of Spence versus Ugas may have to face the winner of Butaev versus Stanionis. Maybe if they can get the winner of Butaev versus Stanionis to step aside. Maybe then Keith Thurman can face the winner of Ugas versus Spence. But if they can't get the winner of Butaev versus Stanionis to step aside, Keith's going to have to go to Terrence Crawford for his title shot. That's if he wants the title shot. That's if he wants it within that time frame. Summer of this year on that kind of schedule the only world champion that would be available to keith thurman really would be terence crawford so it then becomes a question of how likely is a keith thurman versus terence crawford fight in your opinion terence crawford said he's receptive to a keith thurman fight keith thurman in so many words is saying the same thing in reverse though so can you take keith thurman at his word do you believe him if when summer rolls around terence crawford's the only world champion available for keith thurman to fight do you honestly believe that he'll take him on that he'll fight him yeah i don't take keith thurman at his word i don't i think that keith thurman is looking for one last hoorah i think that keith thurman is attempting to cash out go out there one last time score a big price and i don't know that he can get the kind of big price he's looking for with terence crawford because terence ain't with top rank no more look we'll just have to see what happens when summer gets here